Hello and welcome to the MHS Rewind Studio on the campus of Martinsville High School for the seventh episode of Inside Martinsville Football. Today I'm here as always with Coach Duggar and Coach Yartesian is still undefeated. So how are you feeling? Uh, it's always a good time to come in here and talk to you after a win. So uh, right. just hopefully keep this rolling and uh, very proud of our kids right now. And, uh, you know, we got to kind of bring it back to 1-0. Yep. Um, just keep going 1-0 each week. That's right. So we'll get started with it. Um, last week we played Whiteland. And it was not a Friday Night Lights game. It actually no. got moved to Saturday, and the Artisans had to face some adversity with the uh, storms coming in from the hurricane down south in Florida. We had some uh, wind, yeah. some wind, yeah, and yeah. there was some rain. So the Artisans still had to play on Saturday. So even though with the adversity they faced, how do you think they played? Uh, I think we played pretty well. Um, I, you know, I, I wasn't. I wouldn't say we played great. Um, I think uh, our kids um, they did a good job of of of. of doing what it takes to win the game. Um, I don't know that we were great. Um, and I think we have to be better in a lot of phases. We got to take better care of the ball. Um, we got to continue to play our, our gaps and do our job on defense for an entire game. Uh, but overall, anytime you get a win, you're happy with the win, you're happy with the result. Uh, but we got to get back to the process and, and, and kind of getting back to what gives us the chance to get those wins and kind of cleaning some things up. Uh, weird situation, like you said, playing on a Saturday. Um, you know, the, the rain that came through, the wind and all that, how crazy it was on, a, on Friday night. Um, really caused a lot of challenges for teams that, that did try and play on Friday. There's only one Central Indiana team that really got to play. I believe it was Brebuff and uh, Ron Colley were the only game uh, that really played. And it looked, uh, it looked miserable out there on the, on the film. But, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Saturday came back, still was wet, still was some wind, not near as bad. But uh, uh, proud of our kids for dealing with the situation again. Uh, you know, our, our reactions are always great to those situations. We're a resilient group. I'm very proud of you guys and how you handled that. And we'll always take a win. Yep. So we'll look at some of those plays and we'll play the highlights presented by Carl Van Dievender. Again, you know, you know what Whiteland likes to do. They like to run their, their fly sweep and uh, uh, try and uh, to, to take the air out of the ball a little bit and keep the ball in their hands. Um, I thought we did a great job with them, uh, you know, kind of early on staying gap sound. Uh, they had a lot of success last time we played with them of uh, their bootlegs last year, and I thought we did a much better job this year really causing some issues with their quarterback any time he tried to boot. But um, it was nice getting a good drive together here and getting up to, you know, getting up 7-0. 6-0, um, I believe. I think we missed a two-point conversion. But, uh, get, you know, getting out to a lead here, getting down a good drive, good solid drive. I think it was 80-plus yards, and then finishing with an A.J. Uh, AJ uh, touchdown there on a little uh, read action there off the backside. So um, anytime we get out in front, it's always a good thing. Let our defense kind of fly around, make plays. As you see here, um, I thought Noah Sumner had a great game. Again, I think he's he's been a solid mainstay for us. And I thought our guys, when we did our job right, we looked really, really well. Um, you know, and we got to continue to do that. When we made mistakes, obviously they made big plays. So we're going to have to, to kind of clean that up on our end a little bit. But um, again, proud of our kids. This is a great job here by Landon. This is the epitome of right there of setting an edge by Landon Potarf there. Uh, set the edge and made the tackle with the guy setting the edge. And again, they're trying to boot here and we're right there on top of it causing issues. Um, I thought our defense did a great job of being prepared for all their bootlegs and um, you know just the, the stuff that they try to mix, mix in and sprinkle in on you. This was a big play here. AJ throws a really good ball here to Mason Dotson. Uh, we're not really sure what you're going to do at the end of the half with like 50 seconds to go. Take a shot, uh, see what happens, and that kind of set us up to kind of start being aggressive here. And you know, good ball to Hunter. Getting should have gotten out of bounds. Didn't quite get out there, but uh, uh, you know, kind of got on him a little bit about that. But come back, we get a touchdown here from AJ to Draven. Get Draven his first touchdown of the season. Um, you know, just really good things clicking there. Go up 13 nothing going into halftime. Um, and then our defense comes out and gets a stop early. And you're really liking the trajectory of the game right now. You know, here's a great play by Grady Gardner um, on, the, on their fly guy, their sweep guy. Uh, just get a piece of him, get him down. And then again, here on the same thing here with uh, just a gang tackle there. Guys flying everywhere, um, playing really good football to kind of come out of the half. Uh, it's nice when you do that, get the ball back to our offense, give us a chance. And then when we got the ball back here to, to start this second half, I thought this was probably the most crisp we were. Now we were a little more aggressive because the wind died down. So we took some shots there, as you see with, with Hunter there. Uh, came back, I think we throw uh, a ball that should have been a touchdown to Hunter on the kind of on the goal line, but they, they didn't give it to him. Uh, but just an overall great, great throw and catch here. Um, I don't know how this isn't a touchdown, uh, but they, uh, they, you know, 
we punch it in the next play uh, with Hunter here, a little jet sweep action ourselves uh, to get it in. So uh, just great way to start the half, you know, go up 20-0. And then I, I feel like we, we kind of took our foot off the gas a little bit. They made some plays. We struggled on offense, had some turnovers. Um, you know, I think we had back-to-back -back possessions with turnovers, which aren't, which aren't what you want, which isn't what you want, excuse me. Uh, but, again, just proud of our kids, proud of how they compete. I thought Austin Pryor had another solid game. I don't know what he finished with uh, stat-wise. It wasn't a, uh, you know, an overwhelming night for stats. But um, anytime your defense holds someone to 13, you got a great chance. Um, and, and, again, they made the, the plays when they needed to. Again, there's another bootleg. We're right on top of it. Uh, three, four guys flying to the football. So uh, point of emphasis there. And then anytime you can win on special teams, um, we always want to take advantage of that too. And then a great play there, uh, giving us short field. Unfortunately, we turned the ball over. Uh, but, again, our, our, um, our kids competed, came out, made a few plays here, just didn't get this drive finished the way it should have. Um, I think we fumble the next play, and then it comes down to whether we can stop these guys in the last series. And fortunately for us, we made a couple plays and uh, got the job done. So here's this was a big punt too here by AJ, getting this ball down to the and Mason Dotson getting the ball down to the two yard line. You see the clock there, 3:50 to go, uh, and Whiteland's not a fast strike offense. They're going to try and run the ball. And to their credit, man, they they went 90 some yards and didn't throw one pass until the last play. Uh, you know, it's a big deal, but. That was kind of the play before the last play, which kept them at the five yard line. Now we're down to, to hardly any time. One second, last play, and then we just a great job here by everybody involved there. Reese Wolf does a great job recovering. Grady Gardner does a great job staying over top of the, the, the guy going to the corner. Uh, you know, Dewey flying there, Levi Reuter, just lots of guys flying around and celebrating a win there at the end. So uh, overall, not our best night, uh, but a win's a win. So we'll take it. And uh, talking about some guys stepping up, so Gavin Trake is our uh, normally our right tackle, but he has some knee injury. We're not quite sure what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, a sophomore had to step up and play the role, Kyson Bunn. How do you think yeah. Kyson did in his first, first official varsity start? Yeah, I thought Kyson played really well. Um, he, uh, he did a great job of uh, coming in there and handling the pressure of Friday night. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're a tackle out there as a sophomore, that's kind of a – Kind of a big deal. Um, I didn't. I didn't notice him one way or the other, and that's always a good sign for a lineman if you're getting noticed or not. So, um, you know, a testament to him. Thought he did a great job. Uh, but uh, overall, um, you know, uh, we'll hopefully get Gavin back really soon. Not really sure what's going to happen with that. Um, so we'll uh, we'll kind of see you know day by day with him. But uh, really excited for uh, you know, Kyson Button stepping up in a big opportunity there. Yep. So uh, we'll move on from that. Uh, Whiteland win and tuck it in the books to say, oh, well, we're 6-0. and So uh, Perry Meridian is going to come to town Friday, and it's homecoming week, so how do you keep your team, you know, not distracted by homecoming and stay focused? Yeah, so it, it, it's pretty simple. Our, we talk about it a lot, right? Our job during the homecoming week is win the game, right? That's our job. Uh, everybody else can get involved in the hoopla and have all the fun. Our job is to win the game. Homecoming is a lot more fun when you win the game. So right. um, it, it's the same process every week. Show up, you have a great Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and go one and zero on Friday. Go one and zero every day. Go one and zero on Friday. So that's our 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 our, our plan for the week, um, and we just got to keep that rolling. Yep. So speaking of that Perry team, they are three and three coming into this contest, but they did lose to three good teams: Franklin Central, Whiteland, and um, Decatur Central. So how do you think this team's looking, and what's sort of the plan looking? So like? this, uh, you know, I haven't gone against Perry for a long time. Uh, coached against them when I was at Southport. Now there, this this might be the best Perry team I've seen in 18 years. So yeah. I think they're really good. They do a lot of things really well. Got some really good playmakers. I think the running back solid. I think they've got some receivers that make some really good plays. And the quarterback, uh, he's a little undersized, but man, he throws a really good ball and he's a little um, bad term to use, but something I can think of as wiry. He just kind of makes plays and kind of gets around and, and, and does things that cause problems. But, um, you know, they're, they, they're in every game. There's not a game they haven't been in. Um, and, you know, they're playing with their tie with Whiteland at halftime. They're only down by seven against Plainfield at halftime. So they're right there in game. So we just got to do a good job of playing our game, playing our brand of football, um, and, and, you know, making sure that they don't do that to us. Mm -hmm. So last question before I let you go here. What are the keys to the game? I know it's the same every week, but just to yeah. reiterate. Offensively, take care of the football. we got to clean things up. Uh, we're going to have to do a great job of identifying fronts again like usual. Um, and we're going to have to make some plays. We really are. We're going to have to get back to kind of making some plays and stretching the defense a little bit. Uh, uh, defensively, it's what it always is. Can't give up big plays. Got to uh, be gap sound, fly to the football, gang tackle. Yeah. 
All right, thank you, Coach. That is going to do it for the seventh episode of Inside Martinsville Football here in the MHS Rewind Studio on the campus of Martinsville High School. I would, as always, like to thank Coach Duggar for answering some of these questions. I'm your host, Maddox Dilley. Thank you for watching.